Good morning, everyone. So, well, pretty much every one of us here have a smartphone, right? Uh, it is a, a part of our, a part of our everyday, day-to-day -day functions, and a, a way of escape to an alternate dimension when you are stuck in a boring or awkward meetings. So, have you ever felt that you, your phone got slow after a while? And it is struggles to load apps and when you are watching videos you often get uh, annoyed by its lagginess. And uh, after a while your uh, social media app uh, will rightfully show you this advertisement. Uh, the latest and greatest ultra in, uh, innovation revolution in the, uh, which gives us the hundred x zoom in your smartphone. Who needs that? But anyway, you got at attracted by this new lustrous phone and you decide to buy a new phone. And again, uh, over the time, it will uh, slow again and you will also see the marketing and you buy a new phone. This is a smartphone cycle that we are stuck in this. Unfortunately, I am also a victim of this vicious loop. Keep buying a new phone year by year. And, uh, uh, why is it happening? I wondered, and uh, I, as a data scientist, I looked into the facts, looked into the data, and I found that uh, this smartphone is made up of uh, several components. Uh, so the circuit board, battery, display, and uh, a new scratches display and glasses, everything. And over the time, these components are tend to get degraded because of its natural constraints. Uh, we can't uh, do any, uh, anything much to uh, 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 lower that, but uh, it's not what we think it is. Uh, smartphone mac makers uh, have a, a means to hasten this product. How you may ask? So the smartphone makers have its uh, have their uh, app developers or engineers. So they write this software that controls all this hardware. So they can. They have this power to influence the hardware's functioning and they can hasten this uh, process of degradation and they may trick us to buy in the phone. So, this optimized solution is uh, done in a, uh, done as a business motive by many smartphone makers. Uh, popularly, Apple has been uh, alleged and it has been fined. 130 million uh, because it slows down its own uh, uh, slower and older iPhones and uh, uh, pushing people to buy new and latest smartphones just to make a profit. Uh, although this is a, a huge disservice to its consumers, there is more consequences to this actually. And uh, that is that is why. Uh, in the smartphone manufacturing, uh, it is almost made up of 60% of the mineral, uh, elements that is found in the periodic table. These elements are so rare, it is very hard to mine them and these are all non-renewable resources. And uh, uh, we make a huge number of smartphones every year. It is estimated that uh, an average of 1.7 billion smartphones or being manufactured every year, and uh, 130 to 150 million smartphones are being discarded every year just in the US. Uh, these have a huge uh, uh, consequences because we may think smartphone isn't leaving any carbon footprint, but uh, the production of smartphones have a huge uh, carbon, uh, carbon dioxide emissions and other, other pollutants as well. So, uh, so if we just extend our smartphone's lifespan, if we just extend your smartphone's lifespan by one, just one year, you can actually save uh, a greenhouse emissions that is released by 2 million cars in and here on the road. So, this is a very niche and very surprising revelation for me. And I looked into that and uh, uh, see how can we do this and how much uh, impact that is uh, lives on this planet. We are already in this uh, global pandemic and we are going to meet a very uh, dangerous uh, future which is climate change. 
Uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change uh, released its latest report that is humans are to be blamed for this uh, climate change and the global average temperature will only increase up until to our 2050 no matter how much we reduce our carbon emissions and it is also estimated that uh, by the end of 21st century uh, we may hit an increase of 2 to 3.5 degrees Celsius uh, which uh, leaves us huge spiraling event of natural disaster that is uh, started by all this global warming. So, last natural disasters like starting from the melting of ice caps, this will uh, set on a trembling effect to all other uh, natural disasters because uh, ice caps are our protective layer which reflects all the UV rays uh, back to the atmosphere. And if that's gone, we will also see a lot of forest fires. And uh, last year we lost almost three fourths of our of our Earth's lung, which is uh, Amazon forest. And uh, 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 floods, droughts, and uh, sea level will keep on rising, and it will also be a very frequent one. Uh, if we are not careful enough, uh, we may start a new destruction and abomination. Uh, 2020 may be the start of our destruction and end of our civilization. And, but how to stop all this? That is the question I ask. And IPCC has suggested that to limit our uh, global uh, global temperature increase by uh, up to 1.5 degrees Celsius, we must not release 400 billion more tons of CO2. But guess what? It is also estimated that we will reach this amount in just as uh, it, is, it may sound it's all hopeless and how we are going to get past this. Uh, this is a huge task that is uh, that we are having on our purpose. And uh, creating awareness, setting all the things and uh, asking people to plant trees aren't going to save. As a data scientist, I also look into a lot of data and done some statistics and find the probability because I'm an engineer. Uh, so, and uh, I found these are not significant enough to save our planet. Then, uh, who can save us? Uh, in terms of engineers have this, uh, have this power that is, uh, have this power in every product that is around us. Because engineers design, create, and innovate all the products and environment and buildings that you see around us. And uh, they are the right person to uh, engage on this battle against the, uh, reverting back over the field. So, how we are going to solve this smartphone design? Uh, yeah, so, uh, engineers can uh, build a very, uh, a, a very convenient and uh, a very optimistic uh, electronic circuits that will run, run for a long time. And uh, our design, engineering all, engineers also design the entire smartphones and they may design this smartphone which is easy to swap the battery. So we can just swap the battery, use a new battery and use our phones for long without leaving any carbon footprint. And uh, software developers are having a huge, uh, uh, having a huge role in here because they are, in, uh, they are writing all the softwares that we use and uh, they should be conscious about the uh, effects, that, uh, effects that it leaves. And they should be able to write the codes and write the softwares that is more efficient on older hardwares. Just skipping through all the new hardwares and supporting them, leaving all the old hardwares and uh, making a very uh, not so uh, uh, not so speed and uh, a very uh, inconsistent software will make our users to buy a new phone. These may be uh, done in a business model, but engineers should revolt against this and they should be very con climate conscious because it's it's inevitable and we should face it. Uh, other engineers can also focus on a lot of other tasks and we hear of some of uh, things that we can focus on in the near future. 
uh, uh, it may also de uh, design cities and buildings. Uh, it should be uh, non-destructive to the natural ecosystem because once we shut down or destruct any natural ecosystem, it will create a crumbling effect that will uh, turns out to destroy us. And uh, innovation on uh, nuclear reactor for a, a more greener energy. There hasn't been an innovation in nuclear reactors for the past 75 years. Uh, we have made some of the most incredible innovations in the last 50 years. Everything around us is almost as new as every one of us here. And uh, uh, electric vehicle innovation. Electric vehicle has been around the world since 19, uh, since 20th century, but it hasn't been entered into the mass market because uh, there has been a shortage of engineers who can uh, create these innovations that will make the electric vehicles more mass market. And uh, especially here in India, where two-wheeler market is uh, bigger, uh, we should create some indigenous companies that will focus on getting, uh, getting this translation to a, a more greener and electric vehicle based uh, uh, communities. Uh, genetically engineering the crops to be more drought resistant. As I said, drought will be more frequent. Uh, we should be prepared and uh, we should not let our farmers down. So, uh, genetically engineering crops is much more, uh, 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 much more of a way to uh, face this impending future. And uh, yes, I said engineers can do everything because they are in power. Uh, thankfully, we have a lot of engineers with us and uh, we've been producing almost 1.5 million engineers per uh, every year just in India. It is greater than any other book and it is also a great, uh, incredible feat that we pull off and we are having the uh, engineering workforce and uh, having all these talents with us so that we can uh, we can actually control the uh, our future in the world. So, uh, just uh, putting the engineers in charge doesn't mean it is going to work. We should be nurturing our engineers to be more uh, with some ideologies that uh, that make us more sustainable and think of it as an environmental factor. How much of us here? Uh, there is a lot of engineers here and engineering graduates. How much of us here actually care about uh, environmental engineering? It is a subject in all of our uh, syllabus, but we haven't gave a much of a thought into that. It is a distressing fact that is we are not caring about our environment and uh, uh, having a interest and a passion in learning about how the nature works. It is an incredible, uh, incredible system that our nature builds somehow. And uh, learning about it will give a lot of uh, perceptions that will make us better. So, uh, in training and engineers, we should uh, embed all these ideas into them so that we will make uh, uh, we will be best prepared for the next future. So, holistic knowledge about the entire product uh, uh, product creation. So, engineers often have a, a specialization, choose a specialization and they just learn what they are intended to learn. That is not how the product works and that is not how the real life works. Uh, we should have a, 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 a clear idea about every process that is involved in this, uh, involved in this production or manufacture so that we can bring in more perspective, in, uh, more perspective into this manufacturing and more, making it more cleaner and better for our industry. And uh, active collaboration between cross-disciplinary uh, engineering is also uh, a main thing because uh, I, I, we just uh, select the one of the specialization and go on with it. But uh, when we bring in a lot of uh, different uh, disciplinaries, we'll get a lot more perspective, and uh, we'll see uh, we come to see a lot of sectors where it makes of uh, optimization. And uh, we should, as engineers, we shouldn't compromise on the efficiency. We are going to create a lot of 
machines and we are going to be in the production line making all these products and uh, it is our prime duty to uh, safeguard the environment and without letting down any efficiency for any business motive it is not a toler tolerable and it's it will create a, a, a more distressing future for us <laughs> understanding the nature in, in nature environment and being conscious about it in every code in every uh, design in every product we uh, propose we should be more conscious of how much effect or how much impact that is it is going to live in this earth. By taking all of this, uh, we will create a more uh, environmentally centric engineers rather than business minded engineers. Uh, we don't need money now. Uh, we just need our world. We just need our world to live in and our uh, success is living. We need a more sustainable future. Our ancestors have been raised and tested by the nature and uh, they rise by nature and nature rise them and uh, they have been nurtured by everything else. but uh, in the last few uh, centuries we have uh, uh, we have tremendously changed the entire dynamic of our earth and created an entire world around us which is, which is almost artificial as it can be now we embedded ourselves into this planetary actions. So whatever decisions that we take, that will decide the course of this earth. So to have a future and to have this earth live long and to see yourself and to see your children, uh, this incredible beautiful earth, we should be more uh, uh, aware about all our uh, all our acts, all our past actions and we should decide on our future uh, plans. So, uh, this is the thing that, that I want you to leave here. Although this talk may be a, a very uh, bad impression or uh, you may create something, but uh, our natural resources are limited. But uh, there is one resource that is uh, infinite. That is our imagination and uh, a potential for innovation that comes from our human brain. It is a very incredible creation that to our creators. So, this is a time to put all our engineers and all our decision makers' uh, mind into one thing, which is uh, climate change, and we will try to reverse it, and we will reverse it. Thank you.